so we got all the valve seals in uh, all the seats are on uh, I went ahead and got the intake valve stuck in and what I'm gonna do is grab a spring um, when I when I set these springs on I like to just kind of give the inner spring a little push and um, get it flush with the bottom uh, with the big spring I only do that because then it'll snap onto the, the seat just gives it another way to locate itself before you start pressing down on the um, on everything uh, again this is the uh, Brian Tooley kit um, titanium retainers these things weigh they're scary light I mean they um, his site advertises the weight and I checked them on a little scale and uh, they were accurate um, they are I had titanium retainers on my last set of dual springs and I'm not 100% sure whose springs they were but uh, the retainer on this kit plus the locks was I forget exactly it was two or three grams lighter than just the retainer on my other kit so um, they are in fact a good bit lighter so th this is the tool that I use um, for pressing or for uh, installing the springs I made this uh, I had I have access to a machine shop um, for little stuff like this so I didn't have to you know sit there and try to cut this out uh, it's very similar to one that's beat that's sold on tech again I just I had access to the material and um, figured I would just do it myself and it's very easy to use just screw the main bolt down into the head This is the procedure I do on every single one of these. Uh, I just give it a little bit of a snug, not too tight. You don't need to go too tight. And then on every single one, I give the threads a shot of oil. This gets messy towards the end. There's a lot of oil on this thing, but I have not had to change the bolt. The bolt has not bent. The bolt has not stripped or galled or done anything, uh, anything but work for me. Uh, the tool has not bent. Um, so it has worked well and then if you if you take the spring and rotate it you'll actually see that it will the um, retainer hole will kind of oscillate around the, the valve stem I just rotate it until I'm dead center and then uh, slip the wrench all the way down and start cranking and a lot of people have problems with this type of tool um, the one that they buy online or make themselves with it wanting to walk uh, it'll push the it'll push the retainer to the side or pull it to the front. So, what I like to do is um, I actually like to pull it out a little bit this uh, this way away from the the stud, and I keep a little bit of pressure right here because as it pushes down, it's going to want to pull back. So if you if you kind of get a feel for it, I kind of pushed it too far actually. If you get a feel for it, you'll you'll know where to start it out at, and it makes it go a lot easier. That way, you won't get down to it and find out you're binding. So you just crank it down, nice and slow, nice and even. It starts getting a little hairy when you get compressed there. At, uh, but like I said, I haven't had any problems. You grab your locks, slide them in. If these locks don't go in right away, um, usually it just takes a hair more of a turn. Uh, I just, I just kind of give it a little bump and then try it. So now that they're in place, you just slowly back her off until your lock seat and then spin it off. Loosen that one. Simple as that. Uh, while that one's... Before I get that one, I grab another valve. Little tiny bit of oil on the valve stem. Just be nice to the seal. Lift it up. The big head is probably in frame now slide it in place I, I use a towel to keep the valve it doesn't really doesn't really want to fall especially with that new seal kind of holds it tight but I use a towel anyways kind of puts everything at a funky angle but it's all right when I'm not babbling and um, trying to do things so that you can see them. This actually goes pretty quick. It's still going pretty quick. It, 
not as quick as if you had a I almost bought one of those crane um, dual valve ring comp uh, spring compressors they look really slick the only problem is is they're really expensive at least you know at least for me and the budget that I have for this I already bought some tools that I was only going to use one time so I kind of didn't really want to get any, another one that I was never going to use again a little oil spin the nut down I'm sure you guys know um, which tool I'm referring to on LS1 Tech that you can buy. Now, see that one? That one I didn't get lined up. I need to just pull it out a little bit more. And then as it goes in, it'll uh, be centered. Um, the tool on Tech, the, the, the maker of that tool who did a really good job designing that, um, he, I think, I'm not sure what type of material he uses for the actual compressor but I know he um, the studs that he used are kind of like the fail safe like the stud will break or I'm sorry no, no the, the material bends or somewhere around there the material bends before the stud breaks or pulls out um, this the bolt that I'm using I feel like would probably snap before anything else happens it's not a it's not a very sh super strong bolt but um, here this retainer won't go and slide in all the way so I'm just gonna give it a little tweak And then it should go in. Every once in a while, I, the, on the last head that I did, I got a couple stubborn ones. There it goes. And I had to back it off and start over, but it, it's really not that big a deal. Okay, one more. One more, and then I'm going to get to it. Stop boring you guys. You'll probably hear that fan roaring in the background. I couldn't take it with the fan off. It's so stinking hot today. I envy I envy guys that have air conditioning in their shops. I would literally spend all day in the garage if I had air conditioning. The um, where I'm at right now. My uh, my parents' house. The uh, I would love to have all my tools and, and a space to work at my house. Unfortunately, I don't have a garage, and my driveway is not very accommodating. Neither is the township of cars being half apart. So um, there used to be a pool here, and the first time when I built my '87 uh, Firebird, the the um, the pool was still open, so it was literally wrench for a little bit, jump in the pool, get out, wrench for a little bit, and it was so nice. But the pool has since been decommissioned, so I can't do that anymore. I'm sure you really needed to know that. Oops. Spin that puppy down. I think it wants to slide this way, just due to the turning of the um, the, the wrench. I oh, see that one's not paying attention. starting to see a little bit of deflection in my bolt that I'm using so I might actually uh, I did get some I got a handful of these bolts because I figured that I might be destroying it after each set of valves <clears throat> so I had I had no problems you know wasting one wasting one wasting one and, and I'll use eight bolts and be done with it but this one held up great so starting to get a little deflection in it I might just uh, change it out because it wasn't doing that before. 
we'll see. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to finish this up. And then I'm not sure where I'm going today with this. <clears throat> I have um, plenty of stuff to do. I could, uh, one thing I got to do is I actually have to get the motor off of the stand. And um, here, you know, to stare at the head the whole time. I got to get the motor off of the stand. And I have to get the rear cover bolted on. That's going to be kind of a pain in the butt. I don't really, not really looking forward to that just because it's, you know, the hoist is over there. I don't exactly have a lot of room. I'm going to have to clear out. Um, so I, I would like to get the rear cover on in a line that I'm going to build a tool to. Uh, the rear cover I got from um, uh, GM actually came with bolts and the gasket and the rear main seal already installed. So I'm going to just try to align it. I don't, I'm not going to pop the seal out and I don't have a special tool to align it otherwise. So we're just going to see what happens. So I got to get the rear cover on. Uh, I would like to get the front cover on because I'm, I'm done up front. And then I would also like to get the oil pan possibly on before I do the heads. Um, the oil pan, I'm slightly concerned when I pulled the stock one off of this LQ4, I noticed some of the bolt holes were kind of nasty. So I'm kind of prepared to, to drill and put helicoils in some of these. I, I would like to find that out sooner than later so I can get the helicoils and and um, not have to come in after, you know, come in after the fact. So that's what I think I'm going to get done today. If I get all that done within the next few hours, I might go ahead and pop the heads on. And then I could actually probably quit keeping it in a plastic bag because uh, at that point it'll pretty much be sealed up. Um, that's the plan. So we'll see what happens.